If being a bad driver wasn't sin enough, bad habits with cars can still go even further. So here are five dog turd habits that non-car people have about driving. Not wearing a seatbelt because it's unmanly. This has got to be one of the stupidest habits and one of the dumbest reasons ever, but some people actually don't wear seatbelts because apparently it's unmanly to do so because real men shouldn't fear death. Watch me deconstruct this stupid train of logic with everything I'm about to say, alright? If someone's not gonna wear a seatbelt while I'm driving, then they ain't riding. I'm not about to get some ticket because someone developed an insecurity complex over an inanimate object before some wannabe badass tries to say well the real man doesn't fear the cops they'd run from them boy if i'm running from the cops then yo non seatbelt wearing ass is gonna be the first one to go after all i'm a car guy and no passenger means weight reduction bro now go deal with the 5 all on your own like legit if you think not wearing a seatbelt in a car makes you manly because being safe is for wussies let me tell you you already lost when you decided to sit in the cage that is a car. First off, no one should base their whole personality off a literal inanimate object. Buy whatever car you like and do whatever you like with it. Stop trying to be all out here controlling what others do with theirs. But if you really want a vehicle that's unsafe, that also burns upwards of 600 calories, and also only comes with manual transmissions, and requires you to literally hold it up with all your muscles and push it and lift its weight through corners, that's what a motorcycle is for. I ride one of those, by the way, a really heavy one that is not easy to ride, that has a ton of power, can go 0 to 60 in 2 and a half seconds, it makes my Corvette look like a Civic, and I commute on that, daily. That is way manlier than ever wearing a seatbelt. Yeah, we went here. Yeah, you wanna talk about this? Yeah, you car guys, that's cute, that's cute. So if you think you're a badass for not wearing a seatbelt in a car, you are still in a car. If you really wanna base your whole personality off not being a wussy and living super unsafe, then go ahead and get on a motorcycle. Speaking of motorcycles, I've made a video about 5 misconceptions that some of y'all car guys have on bikes. Make sure to check it out after this one if you haven't already. If you aren't subscribed and are enjoying this video so far, now's a great time to subscribe, especially if you love automotive content. Also, like this video, I'd really appreciate it. By the way, don't interpret this as me saying that you need to ride a motorcycle to be a man. I'm just making fun of how ridiculous the notion of people who think that you need to not wear a seatbelt and that makes them manlier because wow, look at how tough I am because I'm so unsafe, bro. I'm living life on the edge. You know those sarcastic bad boy memes where it's like, yeah, I live a little dangerously. I don't dip my toothbrush in water before brushing. Yeah, I'm a bad boy of sorts. That's really the same energy the seatbelt thing has. Cool, bro. That's some clown energy right there if you do it unironically. Moving along, though. The second absolutely dog turd habit that non car people do is using hazards for literally no reason in the rain. Like, why are some drivers like this? Seriously, it's just water. I see all their modern ass traction control, all wheel drive, ABS having mother truckers flashing hazards and going 15 under the speed limit whenever it's a light drizzle. Some of these MFs are the same people who refuse to wear seatbelts. Yeah, uh huh, not so badass are you now, huh? Just took a little bit of water on the road and now, now you lost it all. Especially southerners they talk a hard game about how aggressive they drive and you see them blazing by each other on triple digits on a sunny day like my entire life in atlanta is always being passed by an ultima it doesn't matter what you're doing or how fast you're going you will be beaten by the ultima it is a perpetual threat that is always there but the moment of drop of water comes from the sky everyone in atlanta goes 15 under hazards flashing constantly breaking don't even get me started on snow they act like it's a winter apocalypse meanwhile us northerners i'm not gonna lie we're so well mannered on sunny days like we don't speed we don't drive crazy and we have every reason to right because like we have way emptier roads and also during good weather it's just easier to drive stupid right yet the moment it snows we're just like hey yo bro check this out and we just whip our car into a 360 on a public highway because i don't know somehow driving in snow is just brings out the stupid in us more than driving in regular weather and somehow we're dying less because of it too so that probably just means we're better drivers so yeah i said that but to get off this northerner versus southerner thing the main thing i want to focus on is just i i don't know why non-car people because obviously car guys whether they wherever they live whatever car they have probably is a decent driver i'd hope you are but non-car people who hate driving yeah i don't know i really don't understand what the point of using hazards on for literally no reason in the rain because it actually makes it harder for people to recognize actual emergency situations that would happen in fog, torrential downpours, snowy days, or any day with less visibility than a clear day. So hazards should be reserved for actual emergency situations like suddenly coming to a dead stop on the highway or obviously crashes or warning people stuff ahead. You should not be just continuously driving with them on unless you have like a flat tire. But you know what I'm saying is a lot of people are doing this without those reasons. 
Matching speed to prevent people from passing. Imagine being so petty and passive aggressive that they have to match a semi truck speed while hogging the passing lane. Just because they're mad at people for using the passing lane for, oh, you know, trying to pass them. I hate anyone who does speed matching on purpose to basically just hold the lane and prevent people from passing them. This has caused an enormous amount of crashes and there are too many crash compilations where something happens because of this. And people in the comments usually laugh at like, oh, everyone behind is just the stupid tailgater. Not really, especially when most of these people are going the same speed as a semi, which means that the people behind them aren't tailgating. It's that they're literally stuck behind someone who's not using the passing lane for the purpose of being a passing lane. There's no such thing as determining the speed of a passing lane. You do not sit in that lane and just decide, well, I'm going to go five over. That's enough. Or, oh, the speed limit's 70. I'm going to go 70. There are a lot of states that have something called the slowpoke law, where the farthest left lane, and usually it's marked in most states, that has to be left empty. You do not sit in it. You do not drive in it for a long duration. You just go in it, pass people, get out of it. It has to remain open. There's no ego complex of, I hate being passed, therefore I'm just gonna sit in this lane and speed match a semi to make everyone behind me late to work. This is honestly why America needs more public transport. 90% of these MFs shouldn't be behind a wheel. They don't deserve a license. This ain't even me gatekeeping either. Most of them don't even want to drive and don't even like driving and wouldn't drive if they had another choice. The day we bow to get these MFs off the road is the day the world will finally achieve world peace. I'm serious everyone's blood pressure is going to drop and everyone's going to be significantly less stressed during their commute to work when well, look, look i'm about to just move to the netherlands at this rate i don't even speak a lick of dutch but that's how fed up i am with american traffic bro these non-car mf commuters they dumb for real for real throwing litter out the window this one works the same logic as the first one it's apparently manly to throw stuff out the window and real men hate nature right and real men hate their fellow drivers on the road and throw cigarettes out their car windows and spill whole drinks while they're driving Again, I'm not paying the thousand dollar littering fine if someone who's in my passenger seat gets caught throwing something out of my window because the next piece of trash that's about to get thrown out my car about to be them instead. Have you seen how expensive gas is these days? Heck, have you seen how expensive food even is these days? Where I live, I went to get a freaking Big Mac meal and it costed me $9.52 for a medium. Bro, the Korean food court on the exact same street still gives me katsu for like $9.99 and I still have some to take home after. I ain't got time to play stupid games, McDonald's. Uh, what was I talking about? All oh, right, so the point I'm making is that I don't want us to pay a stupid $1,000 littering fine. I don't think anyone does, to be fair. And look, I already pay enough taxes. I ain't about to give the government any more than that, especially not overthrowing a piece of paper or aluminum on the road. These people are not badasses for littering. They're just stupid as fuck. The final stupid dog turd habit that non-car people have, really specific to them, I notice car people usually don't nearly have this problem, but non-car people really seem to have this ego problem, and that's punishment passing. Specifically, it's a terminology that refers to getting as close to pedestrians and cyclists in their lanes slash on sidewalk as possible. Share the road, it's not their fault cars are really getting into a stupid arms race of size, while lanes have remained the same size, thus giving pedestrians less and less distance from the road they're adjacent to. I know people who are purposely driving cars as close as possible to curbs on rainy days and aim for puddles to purposely splash pedestrians. Yes, I actually knew a few stupid former co-workers and former college friends who would actually do this. They would literally unironically say things like, it's their fault for being too poor to have a car, even though their parents bought them their car. But mother trucker, they might just be walking to the local coffee shop or the campus library. Even if you do have a car, that doesn't mean you always use it. There's a crazy thing called legs and walking. Some of these non-car M MFs really need to try it sometimes. That's the biggest irony of this video. People who aren't hobbyists or enthusiasts of cars are the ones who are the most belligerent and elitist over the ownership of cars. I recently learned this term like a year ago after watching a Not Just Bikes video and it's just mad tragic there are car drivers that do this stupid thing. Punishment passes should be renamed to Manchild Ego Passes because that's literally what's all it is. Like if my wide body 800 horsepower Z06 is about as wide as a literal truck, yet even I can give pedestrians and cyclists adequate space when I'm next to them. I've got 345 tires that can cause a tsunami to whoever is driving behind me. Yes, my friends have confirmed this when they drive behind me in unfortunate torrential downpours, but I still do my best to dodge every puddle that I see. Heck, I avoid the side lanes during torrential downpours since you're more likely to hydroplane there because if you didn't know this, American lanes are built at a slight angle with the middle lanes are usually the highest point on the highway. And the reason this taper happens off on the edges is so obviously water that lands on the road, they're more likely to flow to the edge is where the drains are located. So fun fact if you didn't know that, but now you know now. So if you're someone who was struggling with hydroplaning, that's another good tip to keep in mind.
But to me, everyone's just trying to get to work their own way, or just trying to have fun, or just live life their own way. Whether they're on a skateboard, a bicycle, or their own two legs. I just mind myself, right? If anything, I really don't understand why cars try to make it a challenge where they get as close as them to possible. Because children, for the longest time, the thing that killed them more than anything else was cars. And I know people like to blame jaywalking or bad education, but even when they look twice or whatnot, don't act like some cars weren't the fault in those situations, because people always try to blame pedestrians but you should be aware and you should be mindful and you should realize at the end of the day you're in a near 4,000 pound tank it's crazy how heavy cars are getting these days it's crazy how massive they're getting there are literal weapons on the streets and you have to understand that if you choose to drive one you shouldn't purposely put someone who's not in a car in an even more dangerous situation than they already are in and I know this might still fall on deaf ears because non-car people just have such a poor ego complex and like I said they're just super elitist with the ownership of cars which is just so ironic considering they all own worse cars than us car enthusiasts do. Yeah, I said that. Uh -huh, take that. Imagine revolving your whole personality around an SUV that you don't even take off-road. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this video. If you love cars, automotive content, and motorcycles, make sure to subscribe and make sure to like this video and share it with friends. I have started making shorts recently, so if you haven't seen them, which chances are you probably have seen them, just know that I will continue to make more of them and I enjoy them a lot. Other than that though, see y'all next time. Blade Angel out.